Hello everyone, my name is Jeff Hunter and I am the field CTO at Ninja One. Today we'll be looking at remote monitoring and management on the Ninja One platform. As soon as we log in the Ninja One, we see the main dashboard. This gives us an immediate view of our environment's overall status via the device health tile in the dashboard center. On the bar graph, click yellow to get a list of devices that need attention, or click red to get a list of unhealthy devices that likely require an immediate response. From the top-level dashboard, we're able to view, manage, and reset customizable alerts, monitor for threats as detected by integrated antivirus, and of course manage patches for both the operating system in addition to third-party applications. On the dedicated operating system patching dashboard, there are a variety of patching metrics that show key information like devices with outstanding patches, the devices with many outstanding patches, and in the middle of the screen, a tile where failed patches and pending patches that require approval can be found. We can click through to see the reason a patch failed, or in the case of pending patches, click through to see the patches that require approval and either approve or reject them. Of course, in the event of an inadvertent approval or rejection, that action can easily be undone. On the patching tab, there's access to the same pending, approved, rejected, and failed workflow for third-party software application patching that we just saw for operating system patching. An additional option for software management is the inventory menu, which displays detected installed software with the ability to initiate a quiet uninstall on Windows machines. The backup dashboard, which is reserved for Ninja One Backup, displays usage and recent backup history. Ninja One Backup supports file folder backup, for both Windows and Mac OS, and also supports full image backup for Windows. The Activities dashboard shows all Ninja One logs, including actions Ninja One has taken, like running scripts or installing patches, or when customizable alerts have triggered. At this level, system actions made by Ninja One technicians would also be visible for auditing and tracking purposes. If we return to the main dashboard overview, on the left we can see the different organizations that are being managed in this environment. If you click on an organization, you'll see all devices within that org with the ability to quickly take an action while using the play button. This could be running an automation, installing an application, scheduling a device reboot, starting a remote screen share, or using remote tools like a PowerShell terminal session or the remote file browser to upload and download files. Before we go further, let's talk about how Ninja One works. Ninja One is agent-based, and new installers can be generated in the top right via the plus sign. After generating your installer, you can deploy using your current application installation tool, or for on-prem Active Directory environments, you can install the agent on the domain controller and push to specified OU paths via the Ninja One console. Once installed, the device only needs to be online and connected to the internet, and it can be managed from practically anywhere in the world. After installing the agent, how is the device going to be managed? Within Ninja One, common settings are managed by a device's policy. A policy includes conditions that generate alerts, patching settings for both the operating system and third-party software applications, scheduled automations, and deployment of integrated antivirus. Policies can have parent-child relationships for ease of use when managing all these important settings, and individual line items can be modified to override inheritance. Let's look at the settings inside of an individual policy. Conditions are what generate alerts and tickets inside of Ninja One. You can use templated conditions that are pre-made, or create your own customizable alerts based off a variety of different metrics. Here's an example of a condition that monitors a critical service, in this case the principaler. When the service has been down for a defined period of time, an alert will trigger. Any condition can respond to an alert with an automation. In this case, the out-of-the-box script to start a Windows service would allow us to self-remediate the issue. The critical third step here is resetting the alert if the script is successful, which is determined by the When No Longer Met checkbox. Conditions can also generate tickets in Ninja One Ticketing, an integrated PSA, or any third-party service that can accept emails or webhooks. Operating system patch management is based on two distinct schedules, the scan schedule, which identifies outstanding patches, and the update schedule, which does the heavy lifting of downloading and installing whichever patches have been approved. Patches can be either pre-approved or pre-rejected based on category 
or require a manual level of approval, which we saw earlier on the dashboard. After the update schedule installs the patches, a reboot will typically be required. Ninja One will place an indicator on each device that requires a reboot, but the reboot options can help facilitate this by prompting the end user to reboot or automatically rebooting. The software menu on the left is for third-party software application patching, and the overall workflow is almost identical to operating system patching. There is an additional tab where the software you wish to be patched can be selected. In addition to selecting software and setting patch approval settings, there's also an option to install the full version of the application if it's missing. Note that this is not possible with every application, but there are separate ways to install applications that we'll talk about right now. Other policy settings would include deploying an integrated AV or EDR tool, the ability to schedule automations that run across the machines assigned to this policy, and additional alerts provided by activities. Leaving policies and navigating to the automation library, we'll see options to create new scripts or import scripts from either your own computer or from the template library, which contains scripts created by engineers intended to address common issues in the IT space. Ninja One supports Batch, PowerShell, VBScript, JavaScript, and ShellScript as languages. Ninja One also supports uploading application installers under 1 gigabyte for deployment with the ability to include helper files or pre-post scripts for an all-inclusive automation. At the top of the screen is the global search bar that allows for quick searches for a variety of criteria, like the device name or the current logged in user. There's a handy play button for quick actions on devices, like initiating scripts, reboots, patch cycles, or remote access sessions. Clicking on the device takes us to the device level. Looking at the device, there are hardware performance metrics on the left-hand side, and in the center, we can see general device information, such as the device model number, serial number, or the current idle time. Below that, any current running actions or device health indicators will be visible. The right side will contain device activities with a tab for adding to the notes feed. At the top, we have a device quick bar that allows the device to be favorited, the familiar play button to take actions, and a remote CLI icon to activate a completely silent terminal session. Remote access sessions are also initiated via a dedicated icon. Let's initiate a remote access session using Ninja One Remote. Once the session is initiated, a variety of options are available at the top of the screen for sending keystroke combinations, starting file transfers, pasting from the clipboard, or remotely printing. The Details tab is a single-page view filled with pertinent information on the current state of hardware on the device, with trend lines for usage and the ability to kill processes as well as start and stop services. Actions like those can be taken from the Tools tab, which also allows remote registry modifications, file transfers, and on domain controllers, Active Directory user management. Now that we've seen the individual device level, let's zoom out to the Devices menu, which is accessible via the left side navbar. The Devices menu allows for bulk actions to be taken on groups of devices. You can select multiple machines and run automations or patch cycles, plus additional configuration options like which policy is assigned to the devices or who the assigned users are. The filters at the top allow for devices with common criteria to be shown, and combinations of filters used can be saved as a device group. This allows for quick loading of the group whenever needed, and the dynamic nature of the group means only endpoints that currently meet the search parameters will be visible. For example, if using the up filter to indicate an online device, any offline device would be automatically excluded from appearing within that group. In addition, you can target automations across groups, which creates a set it and forget it workflow. For example, I might create a device group that looks at all Windows workstations that are online and do not have Google Chrome installed. I can then create a task which looks at that group on a recurring schedule and runs an automation to install Google Chrome. Ninja One does the heavy lifting of identifying which devices have Chrome installed and automatically removes those endpoints from the device group. The columns visible on the devices menu are customizable, so you can see the data relevant to your search, and the visible columns are saved along with the filters at the top, so the group not only filters for the endpoints you want to see, but also displays the pertinent information you'd like to have visible. Those device groups can also play a role in Ninja One's reporting capabilities. 
you'll have the ability to generate summary reports in a PDF format as well as data table reports that are in a CSV format. In both cases, the scope of the endpoints you wish to report on can be determined by group membership. After creating these reports, they can easily be scheduled to be sent out on a recurring basis, keeping everyone informed on the state of patch compliance, current asset inventory, or a general overview of what's occurred on devices over the scope of the report. Ninja One allows for two main types of users, technicians and end users. Technicians can have an array of permissions, from full access as a system administrator, to extremely limited, only being able to see certain devices or take certain actions. End users receive a much more basic view of Ninja One, intended to allow remote access to specified machines, ticket submission and management, as well as self-service backup restoration. Although we've been looking at the generic portal of Ninja One so far, you can create a branded portal with a custom URL and logos. Sistray icons can also be created and customized, which allows for options to be given to the end user for submitting tickets. And for technicians within Ninja One, help is easily accessible via the question mark in the top right. Submit a help desk ticket with Ninja One's industry leading support team, read up on recent release notes, or browse the dojo, which holds our knowledge base plus the community form. This has been a high-level overview of the Ninja One platform, but there's always more to talk about and always more to do. If you have questions or would like to talk, please reach out. Take care.